Is it worth to spend your life in a constant state of fear, polarization, and anger? If it wasn't for me experiencing a withdrawal symptoms from actually stopping the news for the past two weeks, probably I wouldn't call it an addiction. But, you know, on a retrospect, now seeing, you know, and experiencing the actual withdrawal symptoms from it, it's absolutely horrendous. You know, first of all, I felt incredible cravings that I really wanted, you know, to switch on the news to find out exactly what's happening. I was agitated. I was quite angry for the first couple of days. And it felt like, you know, my mind was constantly trying to tell me that you need to find out this, you need to find out that. And even in, you know, this very subtle ways, what was happening is that I always tried to have this little sneak peek, you know, to, to, to news. So let's say somebody else was watching or reading news when I went into uh, the waiting room of a medical practice, uh, news were there, and I was really tempted to, you know, just to watch and listen, just at least for a little, a uh, little bit, because, you know, in your mind, you need to know this information. The reality is that with most information that we're getting in today's uh, news cycles are, are information that, that are completely beyond our control. Most of these information are, you know, completely speculative. And uh, many of them are just purely created to invoke an anger, to polarize people, and to make us hate each other which is, you know, another really good reason as to why we should all rethink, you know, our news habits. So our argument is that you could be addicted to the news. The problem is that most of us don't realize that we are. So what's addiction? We need to explain what addiction is to see if, if this works. Can you be addicted to the news? Dopamine reward prediction error. Basically, what it means is that every single time we expect something, uh, we would get a, a dopamine reward. So initially, when you introduce a new behavior, what happens is uh, that our brain learns through the error prediction. So if we predict that, let's say, a food's going to be available, if we're going to uh, tap three times on the lever, uh, we are going to get conditioned to that. And over time, uh, the release of dopamine uh, through the process of three presses is going to be diminished because this is something we're going to expect. Whereas if you going to introduce an error to that, let's say only every five or seven times uh, you, the food's going to be released, uh, that will keep you coming. The idea behind it is that you trying to introduce a randomized uh, reward prediction and that way it will keep you coming. So you were speaking about this morning about the example that you read uh, by the experiment of B.F. Skinner with his experiments with pigeons and how the pigeon, if the food was introduced after the pigeon gave three pecks, uh, the, food, the pigeon would, would eat as much as it needed to eat and it would, it would just peck when it wanted food. But as soon as they introduced the error, as you say, uh, and so the, the, put in a level of unpredictability, uh, the pigeon would kind of go crazy and he'd be pecking that all the time. And that's the the idea with the addictive thing. It's like when you do not know, when you cannot predict, when it becomes unpredictable, you you want to keep going back in case, in case this is the time that you're going to uh, succeed. That's the thing. That's this intermittent reward that you never know when the reward's going to come. So uh, the only way to find out is to keep on trying. And it's it's actually quite you know ingenious idea that's being you know implemented into many casinos these days that are used in all the slot machines that this is this is the idea that's keeping you know people coming you know every now and again you will have a reward if anything sometimes even the reward's going to be so high uh, that you know the the level of dopamine released at the time is going to be through the sky however this is this is the beginning of, you, of, of your unhealthy relationship with this type of behavior. So how is this applicable to, to the news then? 
because people will probably think, what do the casinos and, you know, birds picking... Well, it's, it's all good food? stuff, isn't it? Yeah. It's all positive, whereas news is usually negative things that keep us coming back. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and this is exactly the reason why we watch news. The reason why we watch news is because we're actually looking for hope. Very often, especially over the last year and a half, we've been living through the really difficult times. Most news that we're consuming are negative news. So, based on my own experience, the reason I was constantly coming back to news is because every now and again I would hear a glimpse of positive news, glimpse of positive news that would give me a hope that something will change and that would invoke the release of dopamine that would make me feel happy, at least for a while. Sometimes the dopamine release is going to be really, really high because the news are going to be really invigorating and going to fill you with hope that something's going to change. However, most of the time, shortly after this information, you'll find out that either this is not the truth and you're just going to have to continue coming back to find out whether or not, you know, something positive will eventually happen. So does it work in the same way with the dopamine? Because it, in a way, it seems to me that it wouldn't. It seems like it's a reverse thing because it's the negative, it's not the positive. So you get the dopamine hit when you have a, a positive instance, a success. Whereas with the news, where's the success there? It's like the, it's like the opposite. It's usually... It's usually you're not going there for a positive thing because generally news isn't positive. It's not a source that you usually get positivity. You usually get something terrible, some terrible thing, some catastrophe that you you want to know about it because you want to avoid it. Uh, or you, you so, And more than that, it's also we have this need to communicate with each other. And so it's a, it's a, it's a straight away, it's a source for communication. It's we can discuss this danger on the horizon. We can be we can prepare. We can be ready. Um, but just like so the slot machines, I think the idea is the same. I, I think you you're right. I casino, think they've still got the addiction aspect. I think that still works. When you go to the casino, most of the time you will lose. You only win every now and again. So this is the idea behind it. Yes, you've got lots of negative news, but the reason why you come back to watch the news because you want to know, you want to be able to predict the future and you're looking for hope. Based on research, 90 to 95% of the news that were being presented is negative. Uh, so every single time that, well, every now and again, when you get a positive news, it actually promotes a dopamine release. When you get negative news, what happens is that cortisol is being released in your system, which is a stress hormone, which makes you feel really, really bad. And which is the reason why you feel even more of a need to watch more and more news because you need to know what's going to happen. You need to be ready. You need to be prepared for the worst case scenario. However, the reality of the situation is that 95% of life is not all bad. We've got positives, we've got negatives, and it's all balance. But because of perpetuate fear that's being promoted by news, our perception is being skewed. And that's why many of us are feeling so depressed, so negative, feeling completely hopeless. And do you want to live your life in a news casino? Like, is that a healthy thing for you to do? Exactly. I, I don't find it a healthy thing in my life. Uh, I think, yeah, we've said it before. If it's important enough, somebody's going to tell you. So it's a, that helps me to unhook from that that knowledge, that that telling myself that story that if it's if it's really important if the world's coming to an end you're going to hear it you're going to hear it from the the people who are constantly speaking about it and watching the news uh, so and the other thing with the news is that the way the news are designed these days is that they are designed uh, to grab your attention these days it appears that all these news outlets they don't really care about the truth that much all they care about is to grab your attention, to grab you by your stomach, to make you feel afraid. I think another area that it taps into that is the triggering news that somebody has done something unacceptable. So it could be a news item like this person who, I'm, I'm thinking of a particular thing today, I'm not going to say it, but I'm thinking of a particular thing and that thing is somebody said something which seems really unreasonable because you're like, well, who are they to say that? But I think that's the point. I think that's the triggering part. It's like, so now I need to come back to find out. I need to come back to see if somebody stands up and, and, and makes them 
eat those words if they get their comeuppance because we like that we like to see what's the outcome it, again I think it triggers those circuits those addictive it circuits triggers like, a dopamine uh, releases again and I think that the best solution for the situation like that is just to stop and think for the moment is it worth it is it worth to spend your life in a constant state of fear polarization and anger and listen and expose yourself on a daily basis to the information that are not making your life any more meaningful and any more productive? In my opinion, the answer is no. So yeah, the question is, what value is the news bringing to your life? Uh, does it outweigh the, the negative aspects that it's bringing to your life? And if it doesn't, then maybe the question you need to ask yourself is, do I need to put up some barriers between me and the news and limit the amount that is coming into my life. And that's difficult. I mean, I, I'm listening to the radio this morning. I'm listening to, I'm listening to classical, uh, no, Radio 3. So it's classical music. Why am I listening to that? Because it helps me to feel relaxed until they put on the uh, summary of the news and I'm not feeling so relaxed anymore. So it's difficult. It invades you from all sorts of arenas, but where you can put a limit on it. Uh, certainly for me, it, I think it really changes my life in a positive way to limit the amount of news that's coming into my life where I can. So how do we go about it? What are the potential obstacles that we're going to have to be on the lookout for if we want to go on a news detox? One of the first things is to remove all your media apps, you know, of your phone. Another very difficult uh, part is going to be removing or unsubscribing from all the news channels, even the channels that are remotely mentioning politics, because these are the things that are going to trigger you. Another really good thing would be if you're used to listening to the radio in your cow, car when traveling to work, I think you're going to have to start listening to some sort of podcast instead or listening to music, because otherwise there's no escaping from it. There's nothing you can do. Sooner or later, a newscast uh, is going to be presented and it will make you angry, it will make you polarize, and it will make you crave wanting more, needing to know more. You can just outright explain to somebody, uh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not enjoying the new situation, uh, no, no, it doesn't no, no, help no, no. me in my life. I don't think then... that, see, explaining that much, it's it's a bad idea because that, that, that way it will start the conversation and what you want to do, you want to avoid the conversation. So maybe the best thing will be just to tell people, listen, I'm on a news diet and I'm doing it for health reasons. And this is the reason why I would really appreciate if we wouldn't have any conversation related to any news, at least for for the period of time that I'm going to be on my news diet. I think people would find that a, a, a challenge. Uh, I think people who you were, the pe person who you're communicating with, I think they would find that a challenge. Because like, if you say you're on a an alcohol diet or a food diet, it's like, fine, good for you. It doesn't really affect them. Whereas if you say, yeah, this topic's out of <laughs> this conversation, it's really much more imposing upon them. So it's like, right, okay, so I, I, I can't speak about... Uh, no, no, no. We are in this super comfortable situation, unlike, you know, vast majority of people. What we can do is, well, listen, I don't really want to talk about it. However, there's this video on YouTube on our channel. Yeah, that, that's what they need to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that you can potentially watch and that will tell you everything you need to know about why we're doing what we're doing today. One thing that, you know, everybody will have to prepare is that anyone who's willing to start this news diet will realize how difficult it is. Once you start realizing that you're being bombarded with these news from all around, and it's not only, you know, the mainstream, it's, it's people around you, it's, it's, if we're talking about shops, we're talking about waiting rooms, all this stuff is all around. So you need to have some act tactics that'll help you stay on the right path. So for me, a good tactic is to have a noise canceling headphones. So if I'm in the waiting room, I'll put the headphones on, and rather than listening to news, I'll listen to some sort of positive podcast or listen to the audiobook. You know, you know, you know what I think the bottom line is? You cannot eradicate the news from your life. That's the reality. What you can do is severely limit it. And, and it also increases your awareness of, of what it is that's coming in. And it helps you to be able to interact with that in a positive way and say, well, am I going to focus on that? Because you're going to be triggered. You'll be like, all right, they're speaking about this. Oh, I better, I better check that out and find out some more information about it. But at least if you could, that's, at least that is a better relationship because you have some control there. 
you're not just being bombarded 24-7. You're controlling the, the as much as you can, the influx of news. It's going to come in. You can't eliminate it. You can lock yourself in a, in a, in a metal box. Other you than cannot that, eliminate you, you it completely, eliminate but it. you need to be vigilant, especially at the very early stages, because many people don't even realize that they're addicted. Only after not being exposed to three, four days, then they realize that, that they start to miss something. There's something that, you know, there's a hole that they need to fill. And that's why I think that spending that time that you used to spend on watching news could be way better spent on, let's say, educating yourself, learning a new skill, uh, learning a new language. If, if you think about from a logical standpoint, vast majority of people are spending at least half an hour to an hour every single day on watching news. So if, if this one hour a day in the week is seven hours, it's pretty much a, a working day that you can spend on something productive, something that's not going to cause polarization, something that's not going to make you angry, something that's going to put you in a positive state of mind, because this is exactly what we're promoting. Rather than be feeling hatred, rather than be feeling, you know, anger, what we want to feel, we want to feel positive emotions. These positive emotions will have a huge positive impact on our mental health, will ultimately uh, lead to positive impact on our immune system, which is, you know, our physical health. And this is very important and key takeaway from today's discussion. Why we are promoting, you know, this new detox is because we want everyone to feel better about themselves, to feel healthier, and to feel more gratitude from from their life. And one of the ways you do that is through the control, when you feel in control of your life. And so that's why we're suggesting this, because it allows you to know more what's coming into your life and be able to identify, and also to identify the the addictive qualities or the, 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 the aspects, the spin that's been put on that news to try and make it hook into your life. And so if you're able to observe these things and, and make judgment calls, it puts you in a greater position, power, it gives you a better power uh, to to influence where you're going in your life, like, and, and that's a, a really empowering thing. Like, who, otherwise, you're just drifting along, or, or or somebody else is controlling what you're looking at, what you're focusing on, on what your time is consumed by, and that's that's thoroughly unhealthy. So, yeah, we're, we're trying to empower people to take a bit more control back of their life, uh, particularly in this area of news and its influence on them. Yeah, so. If you liked, you know, our today's discussion, uh, please hit the like and consider subscribing. Stay posted for more news from me and Marius, but not the bad news. We're not going to hook you. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're just going to try and give it to you straight. If you have any questions uh, related to our today's topic, uh, feel free to leave a comment and we'll try our best, you know, to respond to your comments. Other than that, uh, we'll see you next week.